Hello, everyone. I'm Patrick Mijua. I work as a senior data scientist at DeepSense AI in Bydgoszcz. And today I'm going to show you our research project that we were working on in a group of four people from DeepSense uh, between um, January and March 2020. This project is called Clothes Swapping. First, I'm going to tell you what I mean by clothes swapping. Uh, I will describe the goal of our project. Uh, then I will present an interesting related uh, result from the literature. Uh, then the main part of, of the presentation, I will show you our entire pipeline, the pipeline of our solution. And in the end, there will be a short time for a discussion. So what is clothes swapping? Assume that you find or take a picture of a person wearing a t-shirt you like. We call it the source. And uh, you also have a picture of you, which you call the target. And we'd like to know uh, if you would look nice in the same t-shirt. So the goal of the project is to transfer the t-shirt from the source onto the target person. And bear in mind that we only have those pictures. We do not have any metadata regarding the cloth on the poles, just the two pictures, just two sets of pixels. And how to do that? Before I will show you our solution, I'd like to present one of the interesting approaches that you can find in the literature. This is a work of a people from the Saarland Informatics Campus, which was presented during the ECCB20 conference in the end of August 2020. What they do is they re-render a human from a single image. In this way, they are able to transfer a cloth to a person taking any position. It's very impressive. However, there are two details. The first one is that they work on small pictures. And the second one is that they work on plain clothes, on clothes without you know, patterns. And we place attention uh, on those two points. So we would like to work with arbitrarily large pictures and with clothes with arbitrary patterns. And this is our pipeline. It consists of several steps with several models. We used mainly Deep Fashion 2 dataset to train the models. All right, so let's go through the pipeline step by step. Step one, false classification. In our 2D approach, we have to make sure that uh, both the source and the target person are seen from the same side. There is a no sense, for example, in trying to transfer a cloth from a person standing uh, in front of the camera onto a person standing sideways. So we need a model that takes a picture and decides whether this is a front view, right side view, left side view, our back view. For this purpose, we used uh, the transfer learning technique to get a neural classifier. Uh, first, we manually labeled almost 9,000 pictures from the Deep Fashion 2 dataset. Then we took uh, the well known ResNet 18 neural network and we replaced its uh, last layer with a brand new one with four outputs because we had four classes, right? And we trained this uh, neural network. We fine-tuned this neural network to get a good uh, neural classifier. Step two, generating masks and key points. For further processing, we had to extract body part masks, body key points, skin and hair masks, and a cloth mask and key points from the pictures. We did it using four fine-tuned instances of the mask RCNN model. 
Step three in painting of hair and skin on SARS cloth. Sometimes we can see some uh, skin parts of hair on the SARS cloth and we don't want to transfer those skin or hair parts, of course. So what we need is to in-paint them somehow as a uh, pre-processing step. We initially used uh, uh, in-painting function from the CV2 library to do so. It's very simple. It just uh, looks for the closest picture, uh, closest or closest uh, pixel outside the in-painting mask. Uh, as you can see, the result is not so beautiful. However, we had no time for anything more sophisticated, so we sticked to it uh, during our project. Once the preprocessing steps are done, it's time for two main steps. So step four, key point transformation. We need to know where to transfer uh, the t-shirt. All right, and the position of the transferred t-shirt is uh, given by the transferred cloth key points. So we need a model uh, that takes uh, the, uh, the coordinates of the um, source body key points, the coordinates of the source cloth key points, the and the coordinates of the target body key points, and predicts the coordinates of the transferred cloth key points. Uh, to do so, we train a custom uh, three-layer dense neural network from the scratch. We used a subset of the deep fashion data set consisting of uh, pairs of different pictures of people wearing the same clothes. Step five, texturing. When we know where to transfer the cloth, we finally can do that. Our approach is as follows. We look for uh, a projection from a plane to a plane having two properties. The first property is that it should project particular uh, source cloth key points onto respective transfer cloth key points perfectly or almost perfectly. And the second desired property is that this projection should be regular. I mean, it shouldn't distort the interior of the cloth too much. Also note that this pro projection should be trained on the fly for a given pair of source and transferred cloth key points. Our first approach was so-called Delaunay triangularization. If you have a polygon formed from uh, the cloth key points, then you can divide this polygon into triangles. And the Delaunay, tri Delaunay triangularization is uh, such a division which is optimal in a way that those uh, triangles are as close to equilateral triangles as possible. So what we did was we performed the Delaunay triangularization on the uh, source and uh, transfer key points. And then we uh, projected each triangle from the source, uh, key, source cloth onto the, the transfer cloth in an affine way, which is possible then. Uh, but it turned out that uh, the, um, the, transfer, the transfer cloth was too angular then. Also, whenever uh, a part of, uh, of the source cloth is, let's say, outside the polygon formed by the cloth key points, then it cannot be transferred. The second approach that we tried was training a, neural, a small neural network on the fly. The first problem with, uh, with this idea is that the training takes too long. And the second problem is that it turned out that the neural network is from, far from linear. I mean, uh, even stripes becomes, become uh, curved. So it's hard, it's hard to train a neural network which uh, will behave 
similarly to, uh, uh, to a linear projection. What we finally did was training a cubic regression on the fly. By the cubic regression, I mean uh, the linear regression with additional features being combinations of X and Y coordinates up to the third degree. Uh, we use some regularization from the third uh, degree features to keep uh, the project projection as close to the linear as possible, and it worked well. And when we have a projection that preserves key points and is regular uh, inside the cloth area, then what we do is we simply project every coordinates uh, inside the source uh, cloth area onto a, a pair of coordinates uh, in the transferred area. And then we move the pixel onto the projected place. And in this way, we fill uh, the transferred area with the uh, source cloth. After the two main steps, we have uh, two post-processing steps. Step six in painting. After transferring the cloth, the source cloth onto the target person, parts of uh, the original target, uh, the original t-shirt wearing by the target person can be still uh, visible. So our goal is to erase those parts to make the picture more natural. Uh, we did it uh, using uh, a GAN based on a paper generative image in painting with contextual attention, which was uh, presented during CDPR 2018. The last step, step seven, putting target skin and hair on transferred cloth. If uh, there were some uh, skin parts or hair parts on the uh, target person, they, they now are occluded by the transfer cloth. So what we have to do is to put them back to the front. And we did it using simple uh, manipulation on masks and pictures without any machine learning. So that's all about the pipeline. Uh, I'd like to also mention that uh, I presented the pipeline uh, on t-shirts. However, we did the same work for other cloth parts as well, for trousers, for skirts, and for short sleeve dresses. And some of the models inside the pipeline are cloth part specific. A short discussion. Uh, first question, could we do that better? Could we improve any uh, of the part, any part of the pipeline? Or maybe could we uh, modify the pipeline to get a better final result? Of course we could, but it was what we were able to achieve under the time constraints we had. And the second question, will Complicated pipelines like this one be replaced by super duper GAN based end to end models. Uh, we started this project with a super duper GAN based end to end approach, but we failed. Right? Because uh, it was just too hard for us or for, um, for a GAN to, to, to achieve. There are some problems like working with big pictures working with patterned clothes and so on. So I think that probably someday uh, we will be able to get rid of such complicated pipelines and do uh, such stuff uh, end to end, however, not yet. Okay, that's all, thanks for watching. And during the questions, I will uh, run a live demo. So if you want to take part in it, then be my guest. And we will be able to get rid of such complicated pipelines and do uh, such stuff uh, end to end, however, not yet. Okay, that's all. Thanks for watching. And during the questions, I will 
uh, run a live demo. So if you want to take part in it, then be my guest. And we will be able to get rid of Okay, all right. It seems I'm online right now. Um, okay, so first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for um, inviting me to this conference. Actually, this conference is perfectly organized, in my opinion. You can even see me in the organized T-shirt, but it's an online conference, right? So it was sent to me. It's amazing. Yeah, this was, this was my first uh, sentence to you. And now I'd like to invite you to the demo I prepared for you. Uh, on Let me paste it. All right. I've just pasted it on the chat. So uh, you can uh, use it if you want to. Let me show you how to do that, right? So uh, I will share my screen. Probably I'm sharing my screen now. Is that true? Oh, it is, all right. So we can go to this uh, closed swapping demo link. And what we can do is we can uh, do closed swapping in the closed swapping demo, right? So for what we can do is we can choose a source person, a target person from the file, choose the uh, clothing type we want to transfer let let it be skirt and click run right and then we can see some results so this is the result of our uh, algorithm and what i propose to do then is to save it to your file and then go to go to the special community that one patrick mijua's demo and paste it here in this way uh, we, we 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 all will see a result of your work so if you want then please try um all right so let me do one more example you can also use urls so let me let me show you uh, such an example. Those are two random pictures from the internet. This time I want to transfer show sleeve top. Right, so this is the result. Uh, yeah, so I hope uh, we will see some of your result in a second. Or maybe we will not. <laughs> Uh, the result is amazing, you say. Yeah, of course, those results are cherry-picked, so the result has to be amazing. Anyway, this is why I propose you to try on your own to and paste the result to, to check whether really the results are amazing or not. Uh, okay, so... I think it's uh, the moment for the questions. I'm not sure whether I should uh, ask the questions myself. No, no, I will I will read them out loud so you can answer them. Okay, so the first question is from Bartosz Ludwiczuk. Uh, Bartosz asks, uh, what part of the pipeline did take the most time to prepare? Data collection, learning, tuning the models? Patrick? Oh, all right, okay, uh, I'm here. What part of the panel did it take uh, the most time to prepare? Hmm. It's not so simple to answer since, you know, almost every part was uh, hard and time consuming and we did a lot of research and we tested a lot of approaches. Um, what I can say is that the most, uh, my favorite part is this, it's this part with uh, the point Four or five, I don't remember right now. This point on uh, putting, putting, putting the the clothing item from the from the source onto the target picture, because you know uh, it was first time when I, when I realized that the linear regression can be better than anything else, right? And it was after 
actually weeks of, of uh, tries with other approaches, the only triangles and neural network approaches and so on, right? And then it, it, it turned out that, all right, linear regression works. So uh, it took a lot of time, a lot of time to prepare. Uh, regarding data collections, uh, as as uh, who was that? As Eva noted, yeah, it was a lot of work to to manually label uh, nine thousand pictures. However, it's rather simple labeling, okay, because it's easy to label whether somebody stands in front of the camera or sideways on in the back of the camera, right? So it was uh, time consuming, but it wasn't as as hard and as boring as usually labeling is. Right, so uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, so I'll have another question for you, mm -hmm. from me. So I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, well, you said that linear reg regression uh, worked uh, surprisingly well, but you mentioned that especially it was linear regression with cubic and quadratic features. Mm -hmm. So I guess that at the beginning you really tried the simple version of linear regression. Can you elaborate a little bit on how the simple version worked? Uh, no, no, we couldn't use uh, just linear regression since linear regression is a linear projection and we cannot uh, use a linear proje projection. Uh, if you imagine, I'm not sure if I can share anything useful right now. Uh, in general, when we have, when you have two, let's say, masks of the uh, source and, and target clothing item, respectively, then you just cannot transfer the source mask onto the, uh, the, the the target masks linearly or in a fine way. I mean, linearly with some translations, it's just impossible. So we needed something non-linear, but uh, as close to the linear one as possible, right? And this this was um, the goal. And the goal was achieved using just linear regression with non-linear features, bonus features. Okay. Okay. Cool. So I have a follow-up question. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you have any measure of how well the texturing actually works, or this was just done like visually? It's a very, very good question and hard actually. Oh, uh, we have some uh, some new res new results in the community channel. So if you want to take a look, then please do. Well, it works in a way. Um, there are things, there are some steps which, which are pretty uh, easy to measure, right? For example, how how well the key points are transferred or how well the key points are um, predicted, transferred key points, right? This is, is just in the regression. You can just compute the distance between the transferred key points and the ground truth. So it's easy. However, uh, there also are situations which are pretty hard to to measure, to be honest. Uh, let's start maybe with uh, the, the typical problem. Then if you um, if you make a small mistake uh, on the shoulders, then it's very well visible. But if you uh, make even a big uh, mistake somewhere in here and in around hips or something, then the, it doesn't matter, right? So there are, from the mm, cognitive point of view, right? In the way as, as, we, as, we, as we see that, there are more or less important parts of clothes, of clothing items, actually. And uh, it's pretty hard to, you know, to transfer this uh, impression into, you know, a measure of, of goodness of, of fit actually. Uh, so yeah, you're right that uh, during, for example, choosing models, we often relied of, on our impressions, but it's somehow, um, let's say a reliable version in, since, you know, the final, the final application is that you just, you know, take a photo of anything, anybody and want to know how you look in the same clothing item, right? So your impression should be mm, good. And this is the final goal of this project in the end of the day, at the end of the day, right? So um, we had to 
decide somehow in and based on our impressions. Fortunately, we had uh, both uh, women and men in the project, so we could just talk about it. All right, we have uh, several more examples. All right, the, the last example of Katzpe is a typical example of situation when the model predicting um, the, uh, the body part masks fails. And as you can see, the shoulders are, are predicted as being too tall. Well which is very bad. And then my, my impression from this picture is that it's just done badly. But, uh, and also there are some mistakes, as I said before, in somewhere in here, however, uh, whatever should I call, I should call it in English, but they are less uh, noticeable, right? Okay, cool. Uh, so I guess that we've run up of, from all the questions. So mm -hmm. I will progress to the next presentation. Thank you, uh, Patrick, for your very interesting talk. Thank you very much. Once more, thank you for organizing this conference in such good way. Thanks. Thanks. It's really nice from you.